Hello there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It's time for another episode of Ask a Crafter. I am fishing for questions here in the most uh, recent thread on my YouTube community page, and I'm recording this, I think February 8th is when I'm recording it, and um, I'm going to answer all the questions that have more than 10 thumbs ups. Now, I won't be doing this all in one video because I have about I think about 35 questions that have more than 10 thumbs ups on them. So I'm gonna break it up over a few videos and dole them out over the next month or so. Um, so whenever I have filmed a batch of Ask a, Craster, Ask a Crafter questions, I post a new post in the community tab for you guys to uh, add your questions to. So um, at the time of recording, I'm going for ones that have more than 10 thumbs ups. And if you look back after the recording, things can change, but I'm doing my best. And that's just the most fair way that I can figure out how to choose the questions for the show. And if you have a question that you want to ask that you haven't heard in an Ask a Crafter, you can post it at the most recent Ask a Crafter thread and just make sure you thumbs up the questions that you want to hear answered. So I know what's, you know, what's really interested, what people are really interested in. So the first question comes from Min Feng. She, uh, she, I hope, I, I'm sorry, I don't, um, I've probably messed up the pronunciation of that name. Um, if all of your art supplies disappeared, what would be your first purchase? And I would have to say probably watercolors and good quality watercolor paper and brushes because it'd be the most versatile for me. Um, I've been really into colored pencil lately, but I think I'd have to go with watercolors. Um, and probably just any good quality brand. I wouldn't say anyone specifically except for M. Graham maybe because that's my favorite, but there's a lot of good ones out there. Um, Kamalita, Kamalita asks, have you ever done custom made watercolor paints as in mix two or three tube watercolors to get a specific color, mix it well and let it dry in a pan? And what are your favorite unique mixtures? I've done that before because if you buy Mission Gold paints, they actually recommend that. If you get the pure pigment set, they have some mixes they recommend. But to be honest, um, I don't like that. I'd much rather keep my my paints pure in a pure state and mix as I need. So um, I really don't have a recommendation for that. Uh, one of the most famous mixes is Burnt Sienna or Burnt Umber and Ultramarine Blue to make a gray, but still, again, I like to mix it as I need it because I like to tint it more brown or warmer or cooler depending on the situation. So I think your paints are most versatile when they're in the pure form because they only get they only get duller the more you mix, the more muddy they'll get. Um, Nerys asks, not everyone has a craft slash sewing slash quilt room. Could you do a mock setup of two small tables, two chairs, and then storage for tips? Um, I have a lot of storage videos on my YouTube channel, so I would refer you to those. Um, <clears throat> Most people I know quilt at their dining room table. They just put their the sewing machine there and they might have like a uh, a tote or something to keep their fabric in. But, um, and I don't sew that much. When I do, I just put my uh, sewing machine out and, and sew what I need to sew. And I'm sorry, because I'm not a quilter, but there's so many quilt channels on YouTube. I've definitely search quilt room tour or sewing room tour and get some ideas. Um, even if you don't have space for a room, you can adapt some of those ideas. Mary Beth asks, why are stamps, dies, ink, gadgets, etc. disappearing from store shelves? Is it the pandemic or is the craft and scrapbooking industry fading? I noticed these changes prior to COVID. Well, trends definitely change and stores stock what is selling. And the thing that I've been, and they also stock what they can get a good price on. And sometimes they sign deals with certain manufacturers to dedicate a certain amount of floor space to a product line. Um, but I think the other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of people coming into the crafting uh, world as hobbyists aren't doing stamping or scrapbooking. A lot of people are coming in and doing t-shirts and fabric and quilting and things like that. So those crafts are more popular and they're getting more floor space. Um, I've seen so many people just on my personal friends list on Facebook and Instagram that have never really been crafty in the past, you know, receive say a, a Cricut maker for Christmas and now they're making custom t-shirts and masks and all sorts of things. And they are folks that wouldn't necessarily consider themselves a crafter in the past, but um, they're finding that they're spending a lot of time and money in the craft store buying things for this new hobby, which is crafting, but it's just a different type of crafting. So you'll see that ebb and flow. Luckily there's online shops where you can find um, a variety of things. There's still lots of great companies out there, but yeah, I've noticed that too, the paper crafting and stamping has definitely shrunk. And I think part of that also, if you go to stamp shows, at least I've seen at the stamp shows I've gone to, is that the um, 
and the population's getting older that attends these shows and there's not as many younger people coming into the fold. I think part of it is that um, younger people are, you know, they're building their careers. A lot of younger people don't have the space to have a hobby like stamping that can really take up a lot of space or the time um, or the money. So, you know, it can get to be kind of an expensive hobby where you need a lot of, you know, doodads. And I think things are kind of, especially with the younger generations, going more towards minimalism and choosing supplies that are more versatile and hobbies that are more, that are less expensive and more versatile and not going for like paper crafting where you have so many, you know, doodads and things like that. I um, hope that answers your question. If you guys have some different opinions, please feel free to share them in the comments below. You may have some different insights. Uh, my insights would be somebody who's, you know, on YouTube enjoying these hobbies and I, you know, but I live in a fairly, fairly rural, like our biggest city is Bangor. That's where I would go into shop. It's not a huge city and, um, you know, shopping online. So I'm sure everyone has different perspectives depending on where in the world they live. Maybe their paper crafting stores are booming where they are. Um, oh, JH is asking for a flower soft tutorial. Uh, yes, I mentioned when I, in my glitter video that I had made this uh, my faux flower soft or snow uh, to use on cards, and somebody asked me, "Yeah, I'll do. I'm gonna do. I'm planning on doing a tutorial on that." Long story short, so <laughs> yes, uh, yes, I will do that. Um, the next question is from Katie. Did has any of your former students become well known either locally or nationally? Thanks for your classes and guidance. Well, not that I know of, but, um, you know, well-known is, is uh, you know, I'm sure there are professional artists, you know, and graphic designers and things that, you know, haven't really become quote-unquote famous or well-known, but they're, you know, making waves in the industry, I'm sure. Um, I ha sadly have not kept in touch with many of my students. So, um, then there were little kids, too. Most of my students were little kids. I taught adult classes, but but the bread and butter was the young, was the children. So, you know, I didn't keep in touch with kids once they, you know, once I was done teaching them, I pretty much only saw them in class. So, um, so I really don't know. It'd be really interesting to see uh, where are they now, you know? Um, let's see, Nancy asks, how do you clean your watercolor brushes and how do you store them? Usually I just rinse them, wipe them off, either let them dry flat or I can let them dry upside down in my paint pucks. I'll show you what those are right here. Like you can put your brushes in to like dry tip down. I really don't think that's necessary. I think if you wipe them or let them dry flat. The thing that hurts your brushes is leaving them in the water overnight. I think if you manage not to do that you're gonna be pretty good. But I usually just rinse them off, wipe them off, and put them in a cup, tip up to dry. Um, unless they get real stained like from phthalo colors then I'll use just some mild soap and rinse them out really good and that's really all they need for a watercolor. You don't need to buy anything real fancy uh, for them. You can use brush soap obviously but um, baby shampoo, any dish soap would work just fine. All right, let's do, oh, we're only at eight minutes. We can do a couple more for this installment. Um, SC wonders, when opening most Daniel Smith watercolor tubes, it seems that it's often unavoidable, <laughs> unavoidable that so much wasted paint oozes out. Um, and I'm, and yes, yes it does. <laughs> There's a question mark there. Uh, to avoid that, what I do is I squeeze the sides of the tube and it usually sucks the, extra paint back in. And um, I also use a tube bringer. So um, the next time I'll use it, especially when I've got the tube kind of like half squished, I use a tube bringer to, uh, to really squish out that paint from the bottom half and then I do the like, squeeze the sides and it, and it slides back in. Daniel Smith is more liquidy paint and some other paints like that, Mission Gold, I think is more liquidy. Any of those paints that are a little bit more loose in the tube tend to do that. And just, you know, squish the sides and it sucks back in. Um, because it kind of opens up the bottom of the tube, I think is what happens there. Um, let's see, Alex Judge asks, is there any new medium or craft that you want to start this year? Oh boy, um, I almost feel like I've done <laughs> most things that I want to try, but, um, I, th I would like to get back to glass bead making, which is something I started a few years ago. I did like kind of, I kind of go in fits and spurts with stuff. Like I'll start a new hobby and I will go crazy for it. I'll, that's all I'll do for weeks and I love it. Buy all kinds of supplies so I'll be too precious, so I'm not too precious, so I don't have to worry about, about uh, using it up and then completely lose interest. Or not lose interest, but things will just annoy me about the craft and then I'm just like, oh, it's just too much of, big, of an ordeal. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, so I would like to get back into glass bead making. I did try to use my torch um, a couple months ago, but the starter, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't, um, 
it wouldn't spark and I was too afraid to light it with a match because I'm nervous about stuff like that. Um, so I either need to invest in a better torch or get another Diamond Tech replacement torch. I'm on my third. I haven't done that many be uh, beads and I'm already burned through two Diamond Head torches. That Diamond Tech, Diamond Tech, it's the brand that like, uh, well I got a glass bead making kit and I really liked it. I think it's a great little kit, but um, the torch that I got never sparked. So they sent me a new one and that worked fine. But then in storage, it just, I don't know, it crapped out on me somehow. Um, so I probably could light it with a match, but I'm just kind of nervous about that. So I need to, but then I'm thinking maybe I should, if I'm really going to get into this, because I bought all kinds of rods and, but then I found out the rods that I bought were probably not the best because then I was reading reviews about the, I think Devardi glass is what I bought that, because they were the best price. I heard they were kind of shocky, like they could kind of shatter a bit easier. So I don't know. Um, you know, kind of one of those things where you're a beginner and you're just like looking around and finding supplies and not necessarily buying the best things. Um, but I could just go to like a big box craft store or Amazon and buy a torch head for probably like, I don't know, 10 or 20 bucks. That's probably what I should do and just see how invested I really want to get in it because I was also a little bit afraid that because the Diamond Tech company, they make the, the bead making torch and they also make the bead kiln the, where you can melt the glass uh, fragments in your microwave. Um, they're neat and they're very user friendly, but I kind of wonder if they might not prepare you for the uh like they I, I feel like there's not very many warnings like if they because like when I would do some of these projects and I would be talking to people like oh you need to wear these special glasses or you need to you know have a different microwave for your glass or you need to like it doesn't say anything about that in the literature that came with it in the instructions it doesn't say anything about having to wear special glasses or having to do this or that and I'm like oh I don't want to damage my eyesight because I mean it's my living um so yeah long story short I would like to get back into glass bead making because um, I find it very relaxing and I am somebody that tends to be very stressed out and wound up a lot of the time. So that would be a good hobby for me. And maybe get back into crochet and knitting because, again, I don't know why I don't do those relaxing crafts when I find them so enjoyable and relaxing. I, what is it? I know, a torch! <laughs> fire! I find fire very relaxing. Well, I do, I like to sit in front of the fire and read. So anyway, those those two, I don't think there's anything new that I want to try because I, again, like I mentioned, I feel like I've tried everything I want to try, but I'm kind of a dilettante with a lot of these things like the glass beads and, um, and crochet and things like that. Uh, boy, a long answer to a short question. <laughs> Okay, let's see. We'll do one more question on this video. Um, this Oh, it's again by Camelita. She asked some good questions because people are thumb giving them the thumbs up. How do you use watercolor pencils that are scratchy, not pigmented, slash terrible, aka how do you use up the terrible art supplies when it comes to watercolor media and acrylics specifically? Okay. All right. I'm going to have to drop some truth on you here. And I'm sure this is not what you want to hear. But if they are terrible, I wouldn't use them. If they are, if they are sucking the joy out of your crafting, um, try to get better supplies. Now, if this isn't possible, and I and I have to, you know, understand. I know it's not possible. If you spent your budget on supplies and they were no good, then you're gonna have to make it work, right? You're gonna have to make it work. So, if it's terrible pencils. Um, what can you use the pencils for? Well, maybe if they're watercolor pencils, maybe you can shave off the wood and you can dissolve the uh, the pencils into like a liquid watercolor and make it like concentrated enough that you can paint with it um, or turn them into like a, uh, a spray that you could use. I mean, this is a lot of work. Maybe you take the pencils and you take a like a plastic tray and you lay them all out and then you pour resin on them and you make a trivet or something or you find or maybe you take like a cute um just a plain coffee can and you put glue all around it and you put the pencils all the way around and you make a cute storage solution for your um for your other art supplies or, or you make a gift or something like that using them as a decoration or an embellishment rather than using the supplies as their intended purpose if you go to youtube you can see um like people that have taken colored pencils and they've like basically just bound them all together and filled it with resin and like used them on a lathe and would, would turn a bowl out of them or something. People have some really clever ideas. So um, think about using them for a purpose that you didn't intend maybe doing a, an altered canvas or an altered 
a book or something like that with the pencils. Use the pencils as the binding in a piano hinge journal or conch. Is, it, is that what it's called? The piano hinge journal where they have the all the, the pages have the little um, tabs cut in the end you slide dowels or skewers through usual. Maybe do something like that so you're using it up. You don't feel like you've wasted the money. But um, And it sounds like with this question you're trying to use it up so you can buy new. Um, I would I would buy new. If you have children and they're not like really terrible quality and you're not worried about the um, safety of the product. If you can give them to the kids to scribble with, to you know, draw with and sketch with, where their skills aren't to the point where they can discern between the qualities of products, that's a way to do it. Um, if you know the product is a, a child safe product, you could donate it to a school. If you think it, unless it's just truly terrible, that you don't, that you get no joy from creating with it. If you don't think somebody's going to get joy creating with it, try to, you know, use the pencils as a cute, you know, de to decorate a cute storage item for your craft room. Take a box, a cardboard box, and and glue the pencils all the way around the cardboard box. Maybe add some trim in. A uh, trim in? Trim or ribbon. That's what trim is. Trim in. Lindsay's trim in. That's my new million dollar idea. Uh, I'm going to release some trim ins. Um, you know, you decorate a box or a can or something to hold your other supplies so you don't feel like you've wasted the first ones and um, and go on from there. As far as crappy acrylics, you know what? If you do any printmaking, if you do gel printing, jelly printing, I found you can use some real crappy acrylics with your gel printing and it looks fantastic. If you can't afford a gel plate, um, a styrofoam meat tray. So if you, if or if you ever um, buy vegetables or meat and they come in a styrofoam tray, then you can use that styrofoam tray or styrofoam plate to draw designs on with a pencil and you can, you know, put the acrylic paint on there and make prints. That way they, it's a, or it's a great project to do with kids too. You uh, get like styrofoam plates and you just draw on them with a pencil. And then you, if you have a brayer, that's great. But if not, you can use a paintbrush, you cover it with paint and you can do prints. Or if you just use a tray by itself, maybe even make some scratchy marks on it or something and just make some cool backgrounds for other paintings. That's definitely something you can do with, um, with cheaper acrylics. And inexpensive and cheaper watercolor that you don't like, and even acrylics, you get thin down. You could dye ribbons, trim, dye your tribbins, your white tribbins <laughs> with your with your watercolors and acrylics. As long as you're not going to wash them, they should be fine for using on cards or other paper crafts or home decor items that aren't going to be washed. So, um, so there's some ideas. I hope you found that useful. And um, and then get some decent supplies. Remember, you don't have to have a set of 72 color pencils. You could buy a few color pencils from a quality brand, you know, colors that are really saturated, that are vibrant, that you know you're going to use, and build your set slowly. Spend you'll spend the same amount of money. You might just have less physical products, but what you have will be really good and will last you longer. So um, so keep that in mind. There are wonderful budget projects products out there still. So do your research, watch tutorials, watch a few um, <clears throat> reviews from a few different people to make sure and make sure they're new reviews and not reviews that are a few years old. Because sometimes people, especially in the budget range a lot of times the products change. I've noticed a lot of quality inconsistencies over the past years on budget products, so make sure you're looking at recent reviews if you're um, gonna go with another budget product. But um, it's better oftentimes to have a smaller quantity of a better quality product. You're gonna get more joy out of it. And um, and then you can you know build on your collection as your budget allows. So I hope that helped. Um, come back next week for the next batch of answered questions from this uh, this chapter of Ask a Crafter, and I'll put a link in the video description on where you can leave questions for upcoming episodes if you want. Uh, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy crafting! Bye!